Welcome back everyone. My name is Trap. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. The comments really help me make better content. Today I'm going to go over two topics that uh, are used for video in video 28, which are precursors to the video 29 that I'm going to do. I'm doing it this way to keep these videos a little bit shorter. The two Video 27, I discussed TLC article. I gave a bunch of different examples of how to use that particular package. That video is, is rather lengthy, but I did, did put timestamps in it so you can kind of go through that video and find the parts that are interesting to you. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at two classes, two, two GitHub repositories that I've created. One is called Doc Build and one is called New, New Doc. So as always, we should be able to go using Vim Wiki. We should be able to open that repository up very cleanly so this comes up right away on my browser so you can see that I'm using the same content that I'm going to be demonstrating I've actually got it out there on GitHub for you if you want to take a look at the next one it's going to be the new doc one which is another very simple repository now what I'm going to do is demonstrate how these how I use these two repositories remember this is a, a precursor to autodoc autodoc is going to be that ability to use snippets if you will it's very specific to regulated work life sciences or medical devices but from that you should find ways to use some kind of clever or maybe even advanced ways of using LaTeX to streamline your documentation process when you bring all these tools together uh, you can then imagine being able to assemble thousands of documentation at, at any one time and recreate those documents as long as those documents are properly backed up in some source code repository system and you're using some of the conventions that I've that I've been using for the last few years. So with that said, let's kind of get right into to, to uh, autodoc and I mean, I'm sorry, into doc build and we'll take a quick look at that script. So that's the Ruby rake script that you've heard me mention in other videos that I'm using. So what we're looking at here is just a, my, my standard folds. We're going to we're going to look through this file really quickly. You're going to see it's not complicated at all. So we're doing some required statements in Ruby that gives us the open, the rake and the clean sort of things that we want to use. We do some basic exception handling. So if there's an error when I'm going to be moving documents from the input location or the build location to the output or distribution directory, I can get an error. I if that failure occurs, imagine building a hundred of documents and you pipe everything out to a file and you got to find the one that failed. Well, this helps me find that rather quickly. So the run command is pretty straightforward. You're going to run the command. You're going to capture the output so you can you can display it back to standard out. And then uh, you've got a build directory. In this case, I use underscore build. So if I want to delete all the output, I can just do that. Uh, I can nuke that in one directory pretty pretty quickly. You're going to see that being used with a clobber command. Um, LaTeX produces a lot of temporary output files. This is the list of all the files that I care to delete. If, if I do a clean, LaTeX will take that particular directory and it's going to delete everything with those particular extensions in the directory that you're currently located in. Um, if we go down a little bit further, we're going to see our source files. There's that pattern that you've heard me talk about before. So that's a recursive search of your current directory and below for any file with the extension TEXX. And you're going to see me using that in just a minute. Uh, if we go down and we, when we want to do a clobber function, we're going to clobber everything with the exception of the PDF extension. So in this particular context, we tell, we're telling basically the rake system to when we do the clobber, we're telling to ignore the file with the extension PDF because we don't want to delete that file. When we want to do different tasks, these are really, if you if you know make or any type of make system, these are just basic tasks that we're creating. So we can do a deploy if we wanted to. Um, so the deploy is going to do things like remove the directory. It's going to do the uh, doc build with the tech command. It's going to copy files and it does a clobber to clean up the source directory as it's moving things around. Uh, the remove directory is really nothing more than a remove RMRF. That's really all it's doing for that particular directory. Um, and when we look at the copy files, this is where you see that exception coming in. So when we copy from the source directory to the distri distribution directory, if a failure occurs, I want to know what file was successful and I want to know what file failed. So that helps out to find that information so that I can grep the output if I capture it to an output file or if I'm using Tmux and I want to search the window, I can search for the string error to find what, what file didn't work correctly. There's that source file list if I want to get a list of all the source file names that, that, that uh, list files finds. And then here's that simple compilation statement. So you notice 
uh, we're using LaTeX Make. That's all we're doing. So we're just feeding LaTeX Make a bunch of files over and over and over again. And LaTeX Make is going to continue to process that file until it is either fails or until it successfully produces a PDF. And the DOXX is the ability to actually run uh, this particular utility and create a bunch of uh, Microsoft Word type compatible documents so that DOX extension it does work um, I don't use it that often but occasionally people ask me for a copy of a document in a P in a in a word format and as opposed to PDF and they want to be able to edit the file and send me notes back so I put this command in there just to, you know this task in there to actually make that happen so with that said let's actually run the demonstration what I'm in my YouTube directory which has all the source codes and and wiki pages that I use for creating YouTube content in this particular directory, we have a couple files that we can build. So if we type, if we type doc build <laughs> uh, list files, it's going to list all the files that are in this recursive directory that I can build. So notice there's that TEXX extension, so we expect it to build it. If I do a doc build dash T, this is going to tell me all the targets that Rake knows about. And so these targets I've created. And so you can see there's that list file removed directly of the TEXX. So we're going to demonstrate a couple of those things really quick. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to create a split and we're going to run Ranger. And, and inside of Ranger, we'll go down to the wiki directory and we'll go into TLC. And you notice that we've got those three directories. So each, each, each document has its own directory and each directory uh, if you saw if you saw video 27 you know what's going on with these files so what's what's going on with those files right now and what they produce is, is irrelevant what is important is what is the way we're going to go about building all three of them at the same time so what we'll do is we'll just type doc build here without any arguments and what we're going to see is that is that those files are going to automatically get built and you're going to notice that as they were building that there were temporary files in the directory and then they were removed and now if we back up one level and, and come back in we're going to see that ntlc article uh, where did i run it from oh i ran it from the youtube directory so um if i look up if i go up to the youtube directory we will find that there's a build directory right there okay so there's all those documents that were just built okay so when you run doc build it recursively searches from the directory that you're currently located in it creates the output or moves the distribution if you will to a subfolder named underscore build in the directory that you're currently in so if we do that uh, ls minus la over here or just ll we're going to see that there's that build directory so i can safely nuke that directory with a rm dash rf or i can do doc build remove dir, remove distribution and away it goes so we saw that just got deleted on the on, we saw that in the ranger window so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to run the same we're not going to have our output deleted so we can actually see the files that are being that are being created by uh, latex make as it does the doc build as doc build feeds off the command to let tech make so what we're going to look at in here is we're going to take a look at the wiki directory we'll go back to tlc article so we have those same three documents we're going to go ahead and run this from the root directory just to show you that this works um, so what we'll do is we'll do a doc build texx now this time when we run it we're still going to get that recursive build going on but what you're going to notice is in the output directory you're going to see that in the ranger window we're getting temporary output and and, and the pdf itself built so if we look at that file what we what we're going to see in each directory we'll go to tlc atomic elements there's a bunch of different temp temporary files plus we have the pdf if we look at the basic we see the same files with, the, with those extensions, and we see the TEX. Uh, we see that as well for a doc, uh, uh, your, your header. Now, if we do a doc build clean, doc build clean, we're going to see that the doc build clean did not remove the PDF. That way, if I if I if I'm working on something, but I really don't want that file to be kind of distributed right now, I just want to keep it in that directory. I, then I can get rid of the temporary output, but I can also save the, um, uh, the the PDF. So if we look at the doc build dash T again, you notice that there's a clobber that's going to remove any 
generated files. So I kind of use the terminology temporary, meaning the things that LaTeX make is actually producing as it's doing its work. Generated files is the PDF document. So if I simply do uh, doc build uh, clobber, we expect to see that PDF go away. There it went. Okay, so that's what Doc Build is doing. That gives, kind of gives you a quick overview of what Doc Build is doing. So now what we want to do is we want to take a look at New Doc and to see how I'm using New Doc. Again, New Doc is a precursor to the auto documentation video that I'm doing next. So now we're going to look at the Doc Build option. So we're just going to type Doc Build itself, and we're going to see that it did a remove and it did a copy. It so it just did a build for me. Um, there was nothing to build, obviously, right? Because I haven't done anything yet. Um, but what we're going to do is we have that script that we can run. So in this directory, you can see that we have a setup script. So we're just going to go ahead and run the setup script, and we're going to see it's going to spew a lot of information out to the screen really quickly. Now let's see what we built. So we take a look at Ranger or a NGR and you can see that now we have a bunch of doc directories that were created so each directory is going to create a document there's going to be a document created per directory and it's the name that we specified and we have the document name and you notice that file TEXX you're going to see that file in in the directories okay now we're going to hop out of this really quick and we're going to run that doc build again and we'll go ahead and run it with uh, the TEXX command. That way we're going to hang on to the temporary documents. And we're, not, and we're not going to move the documents anywhere is the, way, the reason we're doing it this way. And then we'll hop right back into Ranger and we're going to take a look at what we produced. So you're going to see a bunch of temporary documents. And you're noticing that these are working pretty quickly. It's not taking a lot of time. Uh, if we type in Ranger and you can see that in each directory you can see all the different things that are being created as as we ran those commands over and over again now now is we're just going to hop back into neovim and we're going to take a look at at um, the uh, test record and we're going to see that we can take that document and we can compile it so we, you've seen this in the other videos so we're going to see ocular pop up so we're going to see that this document has a, a it has the title page, it's got the header and footer that you saw in the previous video, and you're gonna see some other, other content coming in. This other content, where it's coming from, how it's getting there right now, is not the purpose of this video. We'll cover that in the next video. But what I did want you to see is that from a four, four lines of LaTeX code, we created a document that was five pages in length. Now I can create a, oh, co create a, a code, re uh, code review. Yeah, we'll go ahead and create a code review, who cares? So we're gonna create a code review here and we're gonna create the document and we're gonna wait for it to finish. Now notice over here in Ocular, we have two documents. They're gonna look very much the same. That's the idea of templates, right? Is you want your documents to look as, as similar to each other as you possibly can. So we notice here that we've got this document that's got a code review, it's got a logo in it, it's got the header, nothing fancy. There's no other, doc, there's no other real content in this document yet, right? So these are just the frameworks that, to make sure that that we were able to build a document that was compliant with Autodoc. And as we get into Autodoc, we're going to re remember, you can see on line one of this file that this is a TLC article based document. So if you watch video 27, you're going to see a lot of what's going on with TLC article that makes all of this the ability to take and combine information with multiple documents. So we're going to take a look at uh, another piece of this code, another piece of the puzzle here. And we're going to get rid of this for right now and so we can see more on the screen at one time. What I want you to what I want to do is we want to take a look at additional layout. So this file, notice as we go down this directory that I've got logos in this top document. I do not have one in the design review. I've got one, I don't have one in the tech plan. I don't have uh, I gotta get in the right directory. Sorry about that. Um, so notice I've got logos all over the place. Well, if I wanted a single logo, that's easy to solve. There's an easy way to solve that. And you're going to see me solving that problem in the next video. But what I want to focus on right now is imagine I'm creating a single document. 
Okay, so here's my single document. It's got four lines of code in it. TLC article is going to hook into this additional header footer. Notice that it's saying grab from the shared additional layout. Okay, that becomes key when I want to do a bunch of different documents. TLC article only knew to look for additional layout. I've taken this for Autodoc and I've overridden that or I'm giving you a demonstration here of how to take content that you want to share between multiple attack documents and hook into TLC article and get all that information pulled together rather quickly. So if we if we take a look at the shared document folder, we'll just zip all this stuff up, get rid of that. We're going to take a look at this thing called shared. We're going to have a data folder and we're going to see there's additional layout. Now notice what's going on in here. We're saying we're going to use glossaries and terms. That must be the first thing that happens before I do anything else with Autodoc. We'll learn more about that in the next video. Notice we've got that TLC get environment variable that we discussed in video 27. Now we're going to hook into Autodoc, but I don't know where it's installed on my computer. That particular function that's an attack command is finding where Autodoc is installed on my computer. And then as we go down a little bit further, we're saying, hey, we're going to pull in the additional layout from the boilerplate. We'll get to more into that with the next video. And you also see we're going to pull in from the project directories. So what that does is because each document that I've just created is using this shared content, they're all going to get glossaries. They are all going to be very, very easy to find where the Autodoc location is. And they're all going to use the project directories, which gives them specific information about the kind of document that's being created. So if we get a little more advanced, we're going to do that in the next video. We're going to move this, we're going to move this generated logo into the shared location. So we end up using ex exactly one logo for every document that we produce. So that then gives you some clues of what you can do. And we're going to see that when we look at Autodoc, we can find the logo. So there could be a logo that's specific to a type of documents. There's a logo that could be specific to the document that you're actually generating. So you've got some different ways you can pull these things together to make your documents a little more robust. And you don't have to um, keep copy and pasting things around. So to recap what, we're, what we've done is we've used a bash script to create a bunch of documents. And that bash script is pretty straightforward. Um, and you can use any programming language that you want as long as it has the ability to run a command at the, at the operating system level. And you notice what we're doing here where we're creating things. We're saying a logo or not logo, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, if I leave out, if I don't include logo, then I don't, I don't get one. Okay, that's that's really what that flag is for. If I wanted to create a document right now, we, we're going to just create foobar right now. All I have to do is I can type um, uh, new doc path slash new doc, and I'm going to create. Um, I'm not going to put. Uh, I'll, uh, I'm not going to use a logo. We're going to say the directory is equal to foo. The file name, um, the file is equal is equal to bar, and the um, type type is going to be equal to a standard tool test doc, and we're going to say the title is equal to uh, is equal to Foo bar bass. Okay, we're gonna do that. Boom. Okay, now we just created something. Okay, now we hop in NeoVim and we've got a directory called foo. That was expected. We have a file called bar. That was expected. We have the bar TEXX file. We have the bar file that we created saying it was a standard tool. No surprise there. Now, when we go and look at the data directory and we look at the additional lay additional layout, this one does not make a reference to the shared folder. So in this context, for whatever this foobar document is, I don't want to share anything at all with the other documents that are in this tree. Having said that, that doesn't preclude me from going back to my wiki and do a doc build, bld, doc build, clobber, get rid of everything, and then just do a doc build. 
right? Now we're going to notice that foobar is going to get created. We're still going to see that error from the other one that we're going to we're going to solve in the next in the next video. But as we go through this, we're going to see that these things are going to get created, and I'm only doing one command, and I'm letting the doc build figure out what it needs to build. And now we got foobar built. Okay, so we got foo slash bar was built, which is what we expected. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you could do to create a build system for your LaTeX documents. Yeah, you can use some of the ideas I have, create your own. That's all cool. Uh, next video, we're going to get into what's going on behind the scenes with all this auto doc stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe. Please like to it. Thank you for watching. My name again is Trap. Have a great day and may God bless you.